if you have seen uh, with education, uh, there was a lot being done in, uh, in Africa, especially to enroll kids to schools. A lot of projects were done. Uh, a lot was invested and parents have now understood that they needed to send their kids to school. Uh, but now that they are at home, um, it's like, you know, we have to do it, redo everything to tell them that it's how important it is uh, to send their kids to school. Schools and the government have also all resorted to certain solutions. Uh, one, for example, being people have been using different communication channels like uh, Telegram has been big, huge here. So people, uh, schools have created different uh, groups and they're using that to send out messages, um, assignments, classworks, all those things to students. So most of the schooling is now being done on Telegram, Telegram groups. Uh, but the government has, yes, uh, been doing some things. Um, they have been broadcasting lessons through uh, uh, television. So mo most most areas uh, do have uh, th TVs and um, they, they have been able to attend some of the classes. Of course, it's not, you know, the same as attending a classroom. And also, well, we're not sure how many of those will be able to attend uh, even though the ones that uh, we see in on TVs and, and everything uh, when we broadcast it, but at least it's better. It's better than, you know, not having any schooling at all. The youth has been instrumental um, in combating uh, this pandemic. Uh, specifically in Ethiopia, I, uh, I have seen a lot being done by the youth. The youth has been mobilizing uh, the people, raising awareness, especially at the beginning about hand washing, the use of face masks. Um, you know, there are people who, who don't really have internet or any other means, you know, to get information. But the youth has been going around um, houses or going on um, with megaphones on uh, cars telling people what to do, you know, not to uh, to keep their social distancing and everything. So the youth has been very much instrumental. Um, and also it's the youth that are coming up with new solutions as well. I've seen uh, like e-commerce is booming in Ethiopia at the moment, uh, like especially after the corona hit, because um, I've seen a lot of like delivery applications popping up everywhere. And these are all led by the youth. This virus, uh, more than anything, has shown us that we're all humans um, and we're all the same when it comes down to it. So um, it's, it has shown us that we need how important it is for us to come together and uh, to fight this um, instead of just, you know, dividing on so many things like social, political divisions, racial divisions. We have created all this on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I do hope that the world will see that humans come first. At the end of the day, we're all the same people. Underlying Our underlying structure is all the same. And that we need to come together and to work together either to fight this disease or any other challenge and problems that we face around the world, you know? I, I think we should, we should think, re rethink the way we're doing things, uh, hold back, step back and see it from a different angle and come up with something that's inclusive and something that works for everyone. And I do hope that's the kind of solidarity that we will have. But one thing that the COVID-19 pushed us to do as well, uh, we were really considering on uh, uh, providing online classes, uh, but we weren't sure uh, how people will receive it because most most of the country is very traditional when it comes to classrooms and all those activities so uh, we weren't really sure how to do that but now we have been pushed um, so we are we are working on uh, providing online classes uh, we are it was a project that we already started but we were afraid to continue with but now we are we're working hard on uh, on providing classes online. Uh, behaviorally, even uh, we are we, we have to deal with a lot of things. We have to deal with a lot of uncertainties, and uh, we don't know what's happening next. 
So we, we, we needed to adapt to that. We had to come up with different routines, work styles, all that is happening. And that will definitely have a lot of impact on our behavioral and structural change. And we've seen that tech is dominating. Um, tech has been our main tool for communication or for you know getting things done. Uh, but most importantly, I think we ne we need to um, we need to keep in mind that we have to have interaction uh, with people, with friends, with family, with the with the people that are around us, so that you know we have that social or human element in us. Before the corona, of course, everyone had to rush to work. There was no time to interact with your neighbors. Uh, you know, everyone was like running and doing their lives. Um, so my fear is now that we, I mean, during the pandemic, of course, a lot, we've seen a lot, especially in Europe, people interacting with their neighbors, singing out, you know, going out and all those things. But um, yeah, I'm afraid that that might loosen once we get back to work. But I do hope that this, uh, we will always have this uh, value. Uh, when we continue but as far as um, I think the general solidarity is concerned I do think that that's something that will stay with us because we've seen its effect we've seen that we needed to come together um, to combat this virus and I do hope that that's something that will continue